Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to use my Copic Hex chart to choose some colors to color the Sunflower Baby stamp from Penny Black. And this is the stamp and it's got a big yellow sunflower. So of course I had to pick that one because I like yellow. So I'm gonna choose some colors from the Hex chart, which is available on my website for just six bucks. And it's a pretty good deal. You'll get, I'll talk more about it, but you'll get a blank chart you can fill in as well as a finished chart that you can print out. And it won't be exactly the same kind of colors, but you'll at least have some sort of a notion of what colors are. So here I've got my red section. I'm gonna make her dress red. And I'm gonna start with the R43 as my lightest color, but it's kind of too pinky for this. I want her dress to really feel like it's red, but I'll start with that anyway. And I'm gonna get that one out along with say an R24 so that I have a real red, red, red. And only that little bit of R43 will be the lightest. Jump over here and maybe an R29 would be nice in there to walk toward that R89 in that far left corner that you can hardly see there. The R89 is just a really, really rich dark red and I really love that color. For the yellow sunflower, I'm gonna start out with the Y06. I'm gonna move up to the Y17, which is the best marker color, just gonna tell you that. And then I'm gonna jump over a few. When I pick colors, I don't always stay right next to each other. And the I'm gonna use either the Y04 or YR16 and then throw in that YR18 at the end. And here with the G94 is the color that I sort of am thinking for a lot of the leaf. I want a lighter color, so I'm gonna jump over to the G82 and I'll see whether or not I need a dark green. For the skin tones, here is where I actually started with the hex chart when I was designing it because I wanted to see which colors were more pinky and peachy. And E00 is great for a little kid's skin. I'm gonna use that RV10 for cheeks. But then I have to jump over a ways in order to get to a mid-tone. And I'm gonna pick an E53 to go with that. And I'm actually gonna go to a completely different part on the chart because normally, normally I would say you would jump over there to the browns, but we're gonna go to purples. Yes, I know purples. If you haven't seen my videos before, that might freak you out, but it's okay. Cause I'm gonna show you that it will work. So this is my skin tone for my base. I always start with coloring the base color first and then start adding my darkest color. Now this is BV01. Most people would like the maybe the 00 or the triple zero or quadruple zero, a little less scary. I don't mind scary. <laughs> I'm very used to this. And by the time we're done, you're gonna see that this is actually gonna fade into nothingness. It's gonna look really wussy by the time we're finished. So then we'll have to do some more work on it to pump the contrast back up. But I'm using this as my darkest color and not being afraid to put the color down there because when you put your mid-tone right over top of it, look what happens to it. It turns into a really beautiful skin tone. And that's because it's a complementary color. Complementary colors make really wonderful shadows. And you can use that in a lot of different color combinations. And I'm gonna go over all of it with my mid-tone there and leave my highlights with just the E00. And I'm not gonna color her legs and her other hand and everything quite yet, because I wanna color some of these other things because it's gonna point out to me where all those bits are. When you get into little tiny areas in that center of the image, sometimes it's just hard to see where one thing starts and the other stops. So I'm gonna go for the things that are obvious in this leaf and the, the stems and everything, those are just obvious. So I'm just gonna color those in with my two greens and we'll decide later whether or not we need more contrast in there. Right now it's looking nice and contrasty. I'm gonna color the tip of that leaf so it looks like it's really curling back a little bit and leave that highlight facing forward. And now I'm gonna go in and do the feet, the little uh, leg that's under here, just using the same colors as I had before. Not much of that will show. And now that the skin tones are dry, I'm going to throw a little bit, bit of the RV10 over top for her cheeks. And now we're on to her dress, and I suddenly noticed her little, uh, her little back is sticking out right there, so I had to go back and fix that. Had the skin tones in there, and then started adding the, the pink to her whole dress. And pink would be a good color for her whole dress, but I really wanted the strong contrast of a really rich red. So now I'm gonna take that R89. For lots of folks, it's too contrasty, so don't worry if you're not up to that. 
It's uh, it's pretty strong and you have to you have to be bold. Just dive in and do it. And if you're hearing my dogs in the background, they are trying to make voiceovers a difficult thing. So I sent them outside so they would at least be crazy out there instead of here in the house. And so now I'm gonna step down to the R29 and smooth out some of the edges of where that R89 was. Join some of that, leaving a little bit of the pink there as the highlights and adding a lot more richness to the dress. Just working my way around all those folds that are drawn into the stamp. And then I'm gonna take my R24. Remember, there's still one color lighter, that pink, and I'm gonna leave just a few tips, just a few of the highlights on her dress in that pink color. Because otherwise the dress will start to look like it's pink with red shadows as opposed to looking like a real red dress. And as soon as I went over with a second coat of that pink, it just brought it all together. So now let's look at this flower because with the light coming from that right hand side where I've got that really strong shadow from her hat onto her face, I wanna carry that same lighting across to the flower. And the things that are gonna be lit from that direction are gonna be the top of that flower at the very, very top, all those little petals up there. This far side on the left is going to be in some shadow. And then as it curves around again, and we get more toward this section, some of the tips of those petals are going to be out in the sunshine too. So I'm filling that in with the Y17 because I have some, some forgivability here before I start going into dark colors. So now I'm gonna go for that YR18, which is my darkest so far. May decide to add more in there. It really depends on whether or not you want a really dark brown in the shadows in that one. But you can see there's more shadow of that orange over on the left side than there is on the right side. And that's gonna give it that roundness and that depth. You add a few on some of those back petals. And then I'm gonna take my YR04. And on the hex chart, you can see that the YR04 and the YR16 are pretty close to each other. That's what the colored chart is for, really. And it's best if you look at it on your screen rather than printouts, because printouts aren't gonna give you accurate color. But it's gonna show you, what you'll be able to see is those colors look like they're the same. You don't need both markers. And, and in a lot of cases, that'll help with your purchases, your purchase decisions on what kind of markers that you might want to buy. But as far as choosing colors, though, they're not, it's not like choose things that are sequential to each other. It's choose things sometimes that are a few apart from each other. So now I'm gonna look at the browns for her hat and stuff. So I'm gonna take the E34, the E37, and then look over here how dark these are. There's R, R, it's E29, E49, E79. The 49 and 79 are really dark. So I'm gonna go for the 49 here for my very darkest on this, the inside of this flower. I want it to be really rich. And E29 is one of the ones that I normally use for a dark brown. So. I only pull out that E49 or E79 when I'm going for really, really rich. And I want this to be really strong. And my E37, I'm basically just covering up that lightest color that was under there. I want that really rich and strong. But I still have that underlying glow, so it still looks like it's got some roundness to it. I wanted her hair to be good and dark because her hat's also gonna be the same browns. So I'm starting with uh, the E34, adding the 37 and the 29 on top of it. So those will be all really nice dark colors. Now there are times when you might wanna add um, a little more hair to it. I wanted to add a few more hairs hanging down from underneath her hat. And so I'm just gonna use two of the browns with a very light touch to add a few more bits of hair. If you're trying to make this look like somebody you know, that might be a helpful thing to have. And now the E34, I wanna to try to keep her hat feeling like it's a little on the lighter side. But look, as I'm doing this, I suddenly realized I hadn't done the, the color over top of that ear. So the ears started looking very purple all of a sudden and went back and covered that up with the skin tone. And now I'm just gonna add a couple of these browns Underneath her hat is the darkest area and over on that left hand side and then it's going to get lighter and lighter as it gets toward the sunshine over on the right hand side. So that E53 is the same tone that I used for the mid-tone for her skin, but that also serves well as the base tone for the hat. 
and when it's in combination with all those other colors it changes it entirely so it looks like a brown hat. I'm going to give her some dark brown shoes so that'll give some real definition to her little feet and her little toes to have dark color all around them. And then the green. I want to add another green so I'm going to pick a BG99 for the dark green to really knock back some shadows here. And that's going to help me to create a real illusion of depth in the flower leaves because I can make this now so that those leaves look like they're curled, like there's certain parts that are sticking out into the sunshine. And watch this leaf in particular. There's just a little bit of a highlight on that one edge or down here on the stem. There's just the very tippy top that has a little of that. But the skin tone started looking weak now. Remember how strong it looked before? So I'm just going over it again with the purple. And you can decide whether or not the purple can stay at that point, but I decided I'd throw a little more of the E53 over it to warm up her skin and add some more richness to it. Because everything looks different when it's in comparison to something else. So you want to make sure that after you get done with something, don't just assume because you already colored the skin that that's all done and you don't need to touch it anymore because it might help to go over it one more time and add a little more punch to it in order to finish off your image well. Alrighty? Let me break in here with a little notice about Hello Monday Live. I'm going to be joining Ellen Hudson on her Facebook page today at 10 a.m. And I'll do an alternate ethnicity coloring on this very stamp. So if you'd like to see this child turn into someone from somewhere else, please join me. There's going to be a link in the doobly-doo to her Facebook page. And... It will eventually be a link to the permanent video, so you can watch it anytime, but live at 10 a.m. Check out my blog for the hex chart. You can check out my art classes site for more Copic classes. Click on my face to subscribe to my channel to get more videos. And I will see you another time. You can go pin this over on Pinterest from my blog. The link is in the doobly-doo down below. And I think that's about it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.